Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Senator Collins revealed the final straw that forced her vote for Kavanaugh. Democrats triggered. The Supreme Court nomination process is complete, but it was not without fraught contention. Thanks to the support of more moderate Republicans, the U.S. Senate was able to get the votes necessary to confirm Justice Kavanaugh to the bench. Senator Susan Collins of Maine, in particular, was one who received a lot of attention for her decision to support Justice Kavanaugh after there was speculation that she would not. Now it is revealed what was the last straw that led Senator Collins to cast the vote the way she did. Senator Collins indicated that it was after the allegations of Julie Swetnick that she decided to support Justice Kavanaugh. Swetnick had alleged that parties took place, where Justice Kavanaugh was present, where there were lines of students, particularly men, to rooms that had women in them. She further alleged that women were inside being gang-raped. These allegations were something that Senator Collins could not believe. Collins indicated she felt these claims were outlandish and merely parroting what others were already saying in the meeting. The fact that Stormy Daniels' attorney, Michael Avenatti had thrown himself into the controversy by becoming Swetnick's lawyer also did not lend her any credibility. Her full speech before the Senate prior to the cloture vote gave a lengthy description of why she believed that Justice Kavanaugh should be confirmed. NBC News reported the following on part of Senator Collins' speech. Mr. President, the five previous times that I have come to the floor to explain my vote on the nomination of a justice to the United States Supreme Court. I have begun my floor remarks explaining my decision with a recognition of the solemn nature and the importance of the occasion. But today we have come to the conclusion of a confirmation process that has become so dysfunctional it looks more like a caricature of a gutter-level political campaign than a solemn occasion. The president nominated Brett Kavanaugh on July 9. Within moments of that announcement, special interest groups raced to be the first to oppose him, including one organization that didn't even bother to fill in the judge's name on its pre-written press release. They simply wrote that they opposed Donald Trump's nomination of 20 to the Supreme Court of the United States. A number of senators joined the race to announce their opposition, but they were beaten to the punch by one of our colleagues who actually announced opposition before the nominee's identity was even known. Palin wasn't the only one to question whether Murkowski's run as Alaska senator needed to end. Fox News host Laura Ingram tweeted, I like Alaska, a lot. Maybe it's time to run for Senate after all. At least Murkowski has abandoned all principles of due process and fairness. Disgraceful. Hashtag confirm Kavanaugh. Murkowski has an interesting history with Palin. Murkowski's father, former Governor Frank Murkowski, appointed his daughter to the Senate in 2002, picking her over Palin. Palin was governor of Alaska from December 2006 until July 2009, having defeated Murkowski's father in the primary. Palin supported Republican candidate Joe Miller in the 2010 Senate race, and Miller beat Murkowski in the primary, but Murkowski defied party leaders to win as a write-in candidate. In 2016, Murkowski won the Republican primary, but Miller still ran against her as a Libertarian candidate. In short, the politics in Alaska are not like the politics in most states, and Murkowski's relationship with the Republican Party is such that she is less likely than most to feel obligated to vote the party line. Additionally, the issue of sexual violence is of particular sensitivity in Alaska, which has the highest rate of sexual assault in the country, and is especially high among Native women, a key coalition of support for Murkowski. Murkowski's against-the-grain vote on Kavanaugh, combined with her contentious history with Palin, means that in the coming years she may find herself in a somewhat familiar position, battling against the Republican establishment. There will be long-term resentment among Republican voters due to Senator Murkowski's lack of courage today said Penny Nance, president of Concerned Women for America, according to The New York Times. Conservative women never forget. Now wouldn't that be a cool scenario? Either one of these two, Palin or Ingram would make a way better senator than Murkowski ever was. Not really sure how she was able to keep her seat after the challenge from Tea Party candidates in 2010 and 2014, but she managed to win. Makes you wonder what exactly is going through those frozen heads of people in Alaska. Although being from California maybe I shouldn't talk. It's like both states are confused. Let's hope someone does come out and beats Murkowski in what we can now consider the Democrat senator from the great state of Alaska. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.